Hello everybody and welcome back. So today I'm filming a full face of Rose Ink. They don't have every step, but they have the base covered and they also have a couple lip products, which I have not tried yet. So I'm excited to get to that step. This is a newer brand to the market, but it's also become one of my favorites. I anticipate every launch of theirs. Their products are just so well thought out and beautiful and they perform so, so well. For the most part, most of their products have become huge favorites of mine. And if you are unfamiliar with this brand, this is a partnership in between Rosie Huntington Whiteley and this brand called Amaris, and they are a biotech company. So they're kind of clean beauty powered by science. They're also cruelty free and vegan. They have a really cool story. I recommend you reading their story if you are new to the brand. They have some pretty inspiring things and you can tell it's just really well thought out. They're pretty cool. They initially came out with some skincare items and some makeup items. It wasn't like they were makeup first then they launched some random skincare. They just wanted it all up front. So I'm excited to see how all of these products perform all together. I've never done this before. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump into it. Also, you guys are gonna have to give me a grace period for growing these things out, these bangs. I tried to do like an aerial swoop. It kind of is flopping, but yeah. That's what's happening. Growing out bangs is such a pain in the butt, but let's get started. I'm first going to go in with the Rose Ink Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum. This has been one of my favorite base launches this year. It's such a fantastic product. It's kind of one of those products that has pigment pearl suspended in a serum. So it looks kind of freaky, but it performs so beautifully and I'm gonna show you how I do right now. So I'm going to mix the shades 30 and 50 because I'm kind of in between these two. I'm gonna take two pumps of 50 and one of 30. I'm gonna try to show you. It's kind of more liquidy, so take a quick peek. It looks like this. So you wanna put it on the back of your hand to warm it up. And then you're gonna want to pop the pigment pearls with your brush. You don't wanna squirt it onto your face because then you're just going to be kind of, it's not gonna work. That's, that's all I have to say. It's not gonna work very well. <laughs> And then I like to apply it in downward strokes. I'm using a MAC 170 brush. I feel like it applies this product the best. And you can see it just is such a great match. This product also blurs your skin a ton and it feels ultra lightweight since it is a tint, but it offers qu quite a bit of coverage. My favorite thing about this though is that it's so incredibly blurring and it lasts well on oily skin. It just remains looking like this luminous, soft focused, finish all day. It can be a little bit fussy, I will give it that. I only apply it in downward strokes and I usually go in with a dampened beauty blender to take away any excess, but when you dampen this product after it's been applied, it kind of reactivates it and then it moves around a little bit oddly. So I will just recommend that you work at it a little bit longer instead of going in with a damp sponge. And it's also not the best building product. I feel like the first layer is what you get because when you add more, again, it kind of rehydrates and then it just kind of slips and slides. So first layer is what you get. I'll bring you guys in so you can see how it's resting against my skin. I don't use any filters on my videos or anything like that. So this is what it looks like on my natural skin texture. You can see it just looks soft and very skin-like. It's such a perfect shade match. I feel like it always just adjusts to where I'm at. I just love how it looks over my problem areas as well. I've been having like this little rash around my mouth. I think it's my toothpaste. I should just switch it, but I just love how it whitens my teeth, but it does this to me. So I feel like I need to find a different whitening one. Anyways, not important at all but it just makes me not think about my problem areas anymore. It just softens them, I love that, and it just looks amazing on all areas of my skin. Doesn't enhance any dry texture ever, and it doesn't look greasy ever at all either. It's just truly marvelous science. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Anyways, moving along from that, that has got to be one of my top, top, top favorites from the brand in general, out of the things I've tried, of course, but it's one that I turn back on all the time. I've repurchased it twice already. I have four bottles 
in total in my collection. I just am addicted to it. So now let's move on <laughs> to the concealer, which is actually the product that has been my biggest flop from the brand personally. I just never really connected with this concealer. I'm using the shade LX40. I found that it was really hard to shade match myself on the websites, like on Sephora as well as Rose Ink. Another thing is that this has like a lot a lot a lot of coverage and it's kind of a thicker consistency and the wand is massive so I find myself always over applying one thing that I will say is like the packaging is so adorable I love I just adore it I love the tone that they picked for the writing and the arch and the frosted it's lovely in the soft matte finish it's just gorgeous in my eyes I just didn't don't like how big the wand is and how thick the actual product is so I'm gonna give it another shot it's been a long 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 time since I've used this I'm just scraping off all of the excess so I don't do that over applying thing and I'm going to add a little bit to begin with because I remember this having a lot of coverage and it stretches quite a bit. And I'm going to blend it in with the warmth of my finger. I usually do a damp beauty blender, but I don't want to disrupt my base. Okay, it's not looking as thick under my eyes as I remember, but it's still... I don't know, it doesn't blow me out of the water, it's not my favorite at all. I feel like the texture of it reminds me of the new Huda Beauty one in a sense, but the Huda Beauty one sinks into your base and looks really natural while giving like a lot of coverage and kind of a full glam effect. Whereas this one, it looks pasty or something under my eyes. I think this product is still a flop for me. This one might be good to spot conceal on areas of your face, but for under the eyes, just not a fan. Now I don't have a setting powder right now, so I'm going to go ahead and use my Pat McGrath under eye blurring powder because it's the one I'm most familiar with and it doesn't have a tint or anything, it's just gonna look like nothing. It's just gonna set my eyes. And I'm just applying that where my concealer usually creases. I'm kind of surprised they don't have any eye products. They do have a brow gel, what is that on my eyelash? Do you see that? Oh, it's just another eyelash. <laughs> okay, so what the heck? Why is it so long? I'm very curious to see what they're going to do in the eye category. Very much excited to see what they do. So now for bronzer. They recently launched these this summer. These are the cream bronzers. <laughs> I have two shades, Parrot Key and Kawaii. I'm going to use Kawaii. It's a little bit more neutral for my skin tone. And this would be a great bronzer for those of you who have an olive leaning undertone. It's quite yellow. And what I like to do is that it kind of self sets to like this powdery finish. So I like to warm up the top layer with my finger, with the warmth of my finger to get it kind of working. And then I'll dip in with a brush and I'm going to be using the Rose Ink brush, the angled one. I think this is for their base product, but I really like it for bronzer and blush. The brushes seem nice. This is the only one I have so far, but it has like a really nice snap to it. Feels quality. Oh, I'm excited to- I, I don't think I've ever tried the bronzer with their skin tint. And this bronzer is very blurring as well as this, so it's going to be Facetune, I think. Oh, that's already looking really, really pretty. It's just like one of those bronzers where you just have to do a couple taps and it will be blended and it will have like such a nice soft edge to it. It's really nice. And then I like this brush because you can flip it onto its pointy side and add a little bit more definition right in the hollows. I'm gonna get carried away. Add it to my chin as well as my nose since the bangs are gone, the nose bronze and the nose blush will be back. So that's the bronzer. I would recommend it as well. It's a really nice formula. The only thing that concerns me is the packaging. I have mentioned this before, but I find that it's not the most airtight. So I always have to like tighten it extra and it bugs me because I don't want it to dry out on me. Cause there was, a little, there was a time there where I left it where it was supposed to be aligned and you can see that the product is kind of lifting from the walls of the jar. And I don't like that. I don't like that, so that makes me nervous. And this bugs me. <laughs> Whoa, who's trying to kill me? 
Oh, I wanted to swatch both tones that I own. So this is the one I went in with today, Kawaii, and this is Parrot Key. You can see it's finished kind of clearly on my hand here. It has like that soft matte finish. Kind of reminds me of like the Huda Beauty Tantour, but a lot sheerer. It just looks great with like a skin tint. It just melts right into it. I think that looks lovely. So now let's move on to highlighters. This one, the highlighters for me are just okay. I like them. They're not my favorite or like my number one product I would recommend from the brand, but they're, they're mid for me. <laughs> I'm so picky when it comes to highlighters. I'll swatch the three that I have, but I still reach for them once in a while. They wouldn't be on my top five list of recommendations for highlighters, that's for sure. They're a little bit glimmery for my liking. The pearlescence isn't the most smooth. It can look a little bit particle for my tastes, if that makes any sense. So over here, we have opalescent. So this is the finish. You can see they, they're really pretty, they are. And they have like a really nice see-through base. Um, so this one is opalescent. This one in the middle is brilliant, which would be great for fair, fair, fair skin tones. And then prismatic over here, which has a nice golden base. I'm going to be using opalescent. This one's too bright for me, this one's too dark for me. And same kind of deal as the bronzers, I like to melt the top layer of the product. You can feel that it has like a self-setting quality to it, which is lovely. And it does have like this moussier texture. Hopefully you'll be able to see once it's warmed up. You can see it creates like little peaks. So I'm just gonna take some on my finger. Okay, that looks actually amazing today. <laughs> just as I was kind of roasting it or talking it down. Of course. It's like, oh yeah, you're talking bad about me? I'm gonna show you, show you what you're missing. Oh no. Okay, yeah, that is actually looking stunning today. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, what am I, what was I even talking about? This is beautiful. I'm so sorry. Maybe the bigger particles were just chilling on top because they're nowhere to be seen. And I just got my prescription for my eyes checked. So something's, something has changed. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is really, really performing beautifully. I think my skin looks awesome. I'm really happy I'm finally using all of the Rose Ink products together because they do perform beautifully as a family. What do you guys think? So now we're moving on to my favorite, number one favorite product from the brand since day one of testing them out, the blushes. These, I can confidently say with my whole entire being, these are my favorite cream blushes. I, kind of crazy to say that, but I told all of my other cream blushes to plug their ears, but these are the, um, the standard for me. They just have every quality I want in a cream blush. They're long lasting, they're very creamy, they add glow, but they're not too greasy looking. They have a little bit of a pearlescence in some of the shades to make the light shine even more. They're just beautiful and the shades are stunning. They do have three new shades, which I have ordered. They haven't arrived yet, which is kind of sad. I was hoping that they would come for this video, but I mean, I have five other shades already in my collection. I'm gonna try to use one that I don't use often, but my two favorite shades out of them all are Heliotrope and Foxglove. Foxglove was my first love and I still use it to bits. It's my favorite one. I have quite a significant dent, especially for things in my collection. I love using this on the lips or cheeks, and you can see the texture of this one again. It kind of has like a moussey finish. You hear that sound? It's good. It just grips onto your base. Let's swatch them, why don't we? And I'm also gonna swatch the lipsticks just so I can coordinate what I wanna do here. Oh yeah, this is Fox Glove my number one, number one favorite out of all of them. It's such a beautiful rusty shade, but it also has some coral accents and some pinky accents. It's really cool. It's one of those blushes that can kind of transform with whatever tones you have on your face. If you have like these warm browns, it pulls more rusty, or if you're more in the pink mood, it pulls more coral. It's cute. It's one of those ones that just works with a lot of things. Uh, it just lights me up inside. These ones, I would say that the packaging is a little bit funny when you're looking at the product open, but I love the way it looks when it's closed because this airplane toilet, this beautiful arch, gorgeous, could use it as home decor. Anyways, that's Fox Glove. This is Heliotrope, my second fave. It's a really nice soft pink with some dusty pink vibes to it. It's so cute. Then we have Anemone, Sea Anemone, 
see and then yeah I always feel like Nemo it's like a nice cute peach Azalea is a beautiful berry which I have not used on my cheeks yet so this might be the move today I believe I've used this on my lips before just not on my cheeks which is a crime because look at that color and then lastly we have a really cool shade named Dahlia which is like a red crimson shade so gorgeous very pigmented would work for everyone. I have a backup of foxglove. Sorry, I just feel like I've popped in like a jump scare there. <laughs> I wanted to show you the original texture of when they arrive to you. It's such a pretty, it makes me want to lick it. Look at this. Do you see this texture going on? It's kind of grainy. I don't know. I feel like it just looks like it would taste good. <laughs> Are you with me on that? I'm just going to take a second to pick a lipstick for later. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it. I'm going to be using the shade Azalea and that's the sentence. <laughs> I'm just gonna use the brush that I applied bronzer. I'm just gonna give it a good wipe. Ooh, this is gonna be cute. I just know it. Oh, it's so cute. It's so vibrant. This would be my number one recommendation from the brand, the blushes. Ever since day one, I've been raving about these. Um, I just love how they just sink into the skin and they never look splotchy or patchy or anything. They just go in with ease. They're very buildable. And if you apply too much, they are easily taken down. They're very fuss free. And they're fun because they're multi-purpose. You can also use them on your lips for a cute monochromatic moment. Oh, wow. Okay, I love this color. I have been holding myself back from something magical for far too long. I am insane. Love that. So now I'm just gonna take a brief intermission. I'm going to do my brows, prime my lids, and I might actually just do a little eye look off camera. I'm gonna do something very clean kind of fitting for the brand. I'm gonna to try to copy one of the model's eye looks on their website. Maybe I should film that. Mm, yeah, probably. I'm just gonna do my brows, prime my lids, and I'll be right back. <laughs> For the eyes, obviously it's going to be very, very simple. So I pulled out two products. I'm gonna try this Ilia liner. This is the shade Dusk. It's their clean line gel liner. I've never tried it before, but it has like a nice neutral brownness to it. See, it's kind of more gray as browns go. <laughs> and I was just kind of studying all of their photos on their Instagram and it looks like they mostly just smudge out the outer lash line. Sometimes they'll be like a little wing, I'm not in the mood to do that today, so I'm just gonna do a little smudgy to enhance my lashes. I'm now taking this brush, this is from Glisten. It's the number F1 brush. I'm doing a little bit of a wing, but nothing crazy. I'm also going to dot a little bit right here because they also enhance the lower lash line. Yeah, you can see the only thing I'm not liking as of right now is the concealer. It's very creasy and thick looking under my eyes. It's not, not for me. Not for me. And that's okay. And they also always have a little bit of a crease definition. So I'm just going to take my little Charlotte Tilbury, the Super Nudes palette, and I'm going to use this tone right here. It's always just kind of on the outer corner. They also do a lot of glossy eyelids, but I can't do that today because I have to wear this for a long, long time. And glossy eyelids are fun for a photo. And then it's like, this has got to get off me eyeball. I feel like it's going to leak into my eyes and I'm going to have glossy irises. And I don't want that. I'm also going to take the smallest amount of this light shade and pop it in the inner corner 
It's kind of like a matte but luminous shade. So you're gonna add some light. They don't really highlight this area in most of their photos, but it is brightened. Highlight in the sense of like a shimmery highlight. Highlighting with a matte powder instead. Now for my mascara, I'm just gonna pop on the uh, Makeup Forever, the Profession All, <laughs> and I'll be right back. And here are the eyes all done. I just love this mascara. I'm so in love with it. It's so reminiscent of the Marc Jacobs at Lashed, and it's filled a void that I've been missing for a very long time. But anyways, the eyes are done. Now let's move on to the last step, which is lips. And I have these ones here. They also have like the little crayons. I don't have any of those. I just have the actual lipsticks, which I love the packaging. It's very similar to the concealer. It's that gorgeous arch. I have four shades. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> Whoa, that was a big one. Four shades. So over here we have per, yep, persuasive. This is where I started. Persuasive or ignatic. Igna, igna, See, I know how to say that, but I kind of got nervous and shy and it did not come out properly. I don't know why I do that with some words that I just, I know how to say them, but then I suddenly get shy. Ignatic. See, I just, this, this is, this is it this this word that i know how to say but i can't say it right now that word then we have besotted right here which is a really pretty shade i think this would look amazing with the heliotrope blush and then lastly we have hypnotic which is kind of like a rusty shade i'm going to use one of these ones up here maybe the one i can pronounce today i don't know what's happening hypnotic nope Still not it. I'm just gonna line my lips with the Double Wear Stay In Place Lip Liner from Estee Lauder in the shade 04 Rose, which is apparently Jennifer Aniston's uh, favorite lip liner for like 15 years or something. It's like the perfect shade. That's cute. And it's fun because it has a little brush on the other side and it's very pointy so you can get a nice smudge action. Okay, that's a gorgeous lip liner color. Wow. Now let's go in with persuasive. And the shape is kind of cool, it's pointy. And this is the shape of the lipstick. It's kind of cool. Oh, what's that? Oh, cool. I guess that's their logo. I've never seen that before. <laughs> but it looks like this. It's a fun shape. How is there cat hair on it already? My lips are incredibly dry, but that's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, that's a perfect lip liner color for this lipstick. Wow. That feels nice too. It feels like it's gonna stick around for a while. I wanna add a little bit of this shade in the middle. Mm, no. Just because my brain is telling me to, I wanna add a little bit of Zalia in the center just to really make sure things go together. Fun! Okay, this turned out really sweet. This is a very sweet look. <laughs> it's a fun, kind of subtler, lip focused look and my skin looks incredible. Oh, I just had I just had the realization I don't have to go back to my bathroom and try to fix my bangs for 10 minutes for the for the final shot. What a relief. <laughs> gets old after months of doing that, you guys. It gets old. <laughs> And here is the finished final look. I feel clean. Like, you know, like that clean girl trend? I feel that. I love this look. I think all of the products performed beautifully together as I would expect if it's just one brand, but I just love the luminosity of my skin, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. It's just so comfortable. I love the colors too. They're very different from what I usually gravitate towards, but I think they're, they look really fresh. I, 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 I love it. I really love how this turned out. Oh, a little jewel just popped out of my cheap little ring. Damn it. It's okay, I flipped it. Nobody will know, except for the thousands of people who are watching this. So I just 
organized all of the products from my most favorite to my least favorite and I'm going to go through that now. So my number one recommended out of the brand are the blushes. These are incredible cream blushes and the shades are stunning as well. If you haven't tried them out yet and you're looking for a new cream blush, highly recommend checking them out. And I really love how most of the products here are refillable. And when you get the refills, they're actually in the least amount of packaging, unlike other refillable brands out there right now. If you know, you know, especially one of them. I don't, I don't want to bring attention to it, but you know, if you know. <laughs> But yeah, but they're really nice. You just pop out the empty tin, put in the new tin, and you're golden. Um, but yeah, blushes, beautiful. Favorites again, just to recap, Heliotrope and Foxglove. My second favorite from the brand, and another product I highly recommend if you are into skin tints, is the Skin Enhance Luminous Tinted Serum. It's stunning, so blurring, long wearing, it's just amazing through and through. One of my number one favorite base products of all time. Following up with that, my third favorite has got to be the bronzers. I think they just perform very beautifully. They have that creamy finish, but they also look powdery and they're very blurring. They just are flattering. They're very see-through, but effective. They're lovely through and through. Then I think it would have to be the lipsticks. I'm actually very happy with how they performed. The texture is very lightweight, even though it has kind of a thicker texture going on. I just feel like these are going to be longer wearing lipsticks and I just love the packaging. The colors are stunning. I think these are going to be ones I gravitate towards often. Then we're moving on to the products that I feel iffy about or the ones that don't shine as bright as the others. <laughs> and ironically, it's the highlighters next. <laughs> the highlighters, they're, I don't know, I'm so picky when it comes to highlighters and these ones I catch myself constantly forgetting about them. If you're really into them, you swatch them, you feel like you're gonna like them, I feel like you would. I'm not gonna say that I wouldn't recommend them. They're just not my favorite out of everything I've tried in my career here. They're not the best, not the worst. They're just okay for me. And then lastly, the only product I would not recommend, especially if you like my concealer recommendations and you get along with those, I don't think you'd like the Rose Ink Concealer. It just falls flat for me. It's too thick. It creases on me. I don't like how it over applies. It's just not for me simple as that already stated all my opinions about it but yeah it's my last favorite out of everything here but there we have it let me know which rose ink product is your favorite or if you're going to pick anything up for the first time let me know all of that in the comments down below but that is all from me today you guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed today's full face of rose ink i'm so excited to see what they have coming up in the next couple of months yeah i just adore this brand so much already i We'll make sure to link all of the products I used in today's video in the description down below, so feel free to check that out, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!